doing a video about the 8-bit guy, David Murray. He is a YouTube creator, he's got like millions of people now, really, really popular. But I've been following this guy for a while and I bought some of his merch, I'll show you that later, it's cool, right? So, But let me give you a little bit of background. The reason I'm talking about YouTube creators is because I think this is going to be the future of how people digest their media. Like, no one watches the telly anymore, literally, telly's for pension. <laughs> Crap. Sorry about that. I'm leaving my phone. Yeah, telly's for pensioners, radio's for pensioners, the BBC is like irrelevant. No one watches it, no one trusts the news anymore, right? So, I mean, like, this is my TV cable. It's I've lived here for nearly five years. I've never plugged my TV cable in because I just don't watch telly anymore, right? So get rid of that. And the reason is because YouTube is better. They can say what they want pretty much on YouTube. The content is like everyone does everything. So I'm into retro 8-bit computers. David Murray's into 8-bit retro computers. I love Commodore stuff. He loves Commodore stuff. It's perfect. I'd recommend everyone go and watch his channel. But anyway, right, let me show you some of the stuff. So, I got this uh, delivered from America. It literally took like a week or something. It was a really short amount of time. Let me show you the quality that this guy gives out. Right? Planet X3 game that he wrote himself. Look at the quality of the box and everything. It's just like being in the 90s where you paid your money and you got a physical good thing. So, let's have a look inside the box. And look, the signature is actually good. Like, I got a signed thing from um, Steve Burke from Gamers Nexus, another channel that I love. And I paid extra for the signature, but what I actually got was initials. SB, it's not good enough. I'm not paying $25 to you. To write SB on there, it's just like a bit of a rip off, really. So, this is what you do a signature like a proper, well done signature with the full name on it. So, anyway, the box is great. Soundtrack on a cassette, I mean, this is like fantastic if you're from the 90s. Look at that, it's a proper. I could, I mean, I don't have a tape player handy, but I can literally play this great quality. Floppy disc with the game on it, three and a half inch floppy. My three and a half inch floppy that I love. And if that's not quite big enough for you, you want something bigger, you've got a five inch floppy, yeah, go on, get one of those in. So, But look at the quality of this stuff. I mean, I haven't even started talking about how good the game is. And this was like $15 or something like that. I mean, I paid extra for the signature, the box and everything else. The, no, I think the box is included. But anyway, what I'm saying is this is a full quality release game written recently by a skilled artistic guy who's good at gaming for an older platform so you get the authentic charm of the old platforms but you get the new programming techniques you know and the uh, the wisdom of hindsight if you like so it's great i mean look at this you get a full manual full color glossy manual tells you about all the characters the levels in there this is brilliant and then it's got the kickstarter hall of fame if you pay for the kickstarter you're in there so 25 dollars altogether for the signed thing that is amazing quality. So yeah, I would highly recommend, if you're into computers, go check out the 8-bit guy. Screw your telly, you're not going to see anything good on there, it's going to bore you senseless. Get into 8-bit stuff, retro stuff, start here, David Murray. Planet X3 is like one of his more recent games. But my favourite game that he's done is this one, Attack of the Petsky Robots. <laughs> This is another one, it's like $25 or something, it's so cheap. The amount of time and effort that goes into these things, and they're amazing. The quality of this release is just fantastic. Again, signed properly on the box, no laziness there. And I actually got this included. This is a controller that David Murray has uh, had made and built, but it's got that connector on it, the Commodore one, so you can use it with Amigas or whatever. And this is actually for playing this game with, which Again, comes on a nice three and a half inch floppy with the box in the uh, manual and everything else. So, I love all this stuff. I mean, look at the amount of just quality that's stuffed into here. This was so cheap. Everyone should get one of these, even if you don't ever play it. It's just a collection item that in years to come is going to be a rarity, a unique rarity with artistic you know, imagination put into it. It's just great. So, yeah, I will re impulse. Get rid of your telly, it's wasting your time. And you're wasting your own time watching it get on youtube and search out the things you love like this is one thing i love anyway so i'm going to get to the point this is his stuff that's amazing i'm going to show you one more amazing thing before i carry on this is my favorite thing full size lp soundtrack of attack of the petsky robots now i haven't opened the plastic i don't even have a record player yet but i will be getting one this is something you will 
rarely, if ever, see from an indie developer to put this much time and effort to collect a team skillful enough to make this music in the first place and press it onto an actual vinyl record in this style of packaging. It's just fantastic. I mean, I, I can't even understand how he's like a miniature genius, this guy. I don't understand how he just generally does everything, but he does everything meticulously well. And the reason I'm going into this, and the reason I got this other stuff here, is because he's got a project on, which I think we all should be interested in, or I'm interested in. Now he's building a new computer. It's uh, a kind of follow-on from the Commodore 64. It's almost meant to be like a two generations ahead super plush version of the Commodore 64. Think Commodore 65, if you've seen that, it's kind of not really a similar machine, but it's a similar idea of carrying on the Commodore line. So this is the computer that it's based on. Well, this isn't, this is a clone, but the Commodore 64, not the C64, Commodore 64 looks just like this, original 8-bit machine. And uh, this is the base. So the reason we love these things so much when they came out, even though they're like, compared to now, they're pointless rubbish. Your phone's more powerful than this thing, right? The reason we love them is because when these came out, these were cutting edge, new. Even the engineers didn't know what they were doing. They were finding out as they went along what the, uh, the power that they had at their disposal. So the Commodore 64 was literally the entry point for most people, the, the, the face of friendly computing, if you like. So his computer is going to be based off this. It's got the same, um, it's completely compatible. That's the um, most amazing thing about his computer. Oh, it's doing my head and I can't remember. It's the Commander X16. The reason it's called that, Commander, is because Commodore, in, you know, word meanings wise, Comanche, Commodore, and Commander all mean the same thing, right? So it's like a play on words for Commodore. And X16 is like, because it's like an extra or extended version of the C16, like his, the design is based on the Commodore C16. So that's it. So I think everyone should get into it. One little problem though, as it was being developed, David, I bet he regrets it now. He said, oh yeah, I'm looking to sell this for $50, $50 for the, the board or like $100 for the really plush version. And now it's rocketed. It's like $500-ish kind of for the full built computer, which is 10 times the original quote. So it's like a huge amount of money. And there's people arguing here and there saying, oh, the project didn't work out. I don't like it. It's lagging it off and the rest of it. But I just want people to remember this. It's it's called the Commander X16. It's like Commodore DNA. That is the whole point in it. It's not meant to be a Raspberry Pi 4, for instance, or some other generalized computer or like any FPGA. You can set it up yourself to emulate this system and that system. That's missing the point. This is meant to be a physical, simple computer that you yourself could learn all the parts of and fix or mess about with inside and outside, learn all the software, learn basic, it's like an enthusiasm project computer, isn't it? But like it's Commodore. So all these people saying, oh, I don't like how it's this and that, and we should do this and that. And it's like, that that's cool. But what you need to do is go and buy a Raspberry Pi because that's already there. It's already designed, it's way cheaper than $500. It's like $100. But that's not what this is. This computer, the Commander X16, is Commodore through and through. And if you're not a fan of Commodore, or you don't like the way things are going more towards Commodore, possibly this computer is not for you <laughs> but for those who it is for are going to love it and i'll tell you why you can spend like 80 quid get one of these um portable hd monitor that thing there is really good quality it's got built-in speakers runs off a usb cable cool love it right so that's this display that i'm going to use um these things are quite interesting raspberry pi 4 model b still in there these apparently are rocketed in price these are worth a lot now i've got three of them so I never use them. Um, this is the kind of thing where like, right, think Command X16, oh, um, all, all the complaints that were made, I'm not gonna repeat them here, but it's like, what you need to do is buy one of these. These solves all those problems and doesn't have anything to do with Commodore. So generally the things that are being complained about are the Commodore genetics. And that's what I mean. It's like, look, you've just gotta realize that is the thing. If you don't like Commodore genetics, you are not gonna like the thing. So anyway, what was the other thing I was gonna show you? Ah, oh, my collection is getting a bit big now, so here we go. Got that one. Oh, all right, heavy old box. Last thing I'm going to show you. Oh, I've done too much sellotape. Here's my knife. Oh, scary unboxing knife. It's not an unboxing knife, just a normal one. Anyway. So, oh my god, how much sellotape have I put on this thing? 
totally unsafe way to knife. Always face it away from you. I'm um, being video, so I should. Ugh. Yeah, the reason these were all boxed, I thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna get everything insured and stick it in boxes and that, because you know, unsure times and I don't have all my eggs in one basket. And literally, they told me pack it all into a big box. That's what I do. So anyway, we're getting there now. Ugh. There we go. All right, destroyed my box. So back to the Commander F16. You might be thinking, yeah, but Raspberry Pi is a little crappy computer. It doesn't have any. It's not a full computer. And it's like, yeah, but this is Raspberry Pi 400. Comes with a mouse, power supply, keyboard built in, memory card in the back with the system, you know, the operating system on there. Stick it into the mains and off you go. So this is another option. If you don't like Commodore, but you want that kind of thing with a smaller design, cheaper, this is your baby. I think it's like $160 or something. It's gone up a bit, but it's worth it. Like I put it back in the box, but I had great fun with this. I was emulating PS2, PS1 games, Nintendo 64, and you can do web browsing and that kind of stuff on there as well. So yeah, that's good. But let me go back to the point of the Commander X16. That's the reason I'm making this video. It's $500 now, it might even go up a bit more. But I just wanted to show you all this stuff to give you a background to say, right, $500 for a computer that's 8-bit might seem like a lot of money. But there's value in there if you're, a, if you're a Commodore guy and a collector of technology like myself. So all these things are going to be worth a ton later on. I mean, why do you think I've got all these? It's not like I play them every single day, I don't. Like all those Evercade games up there, all the CDs, books and everything. It's a historical library of stuff. Because I don't know whether you've realised, books are disappearing, no one buys them. CDs are disappearing, no one buys them. Everything's downloaded. It's a bit... Oh, just, it makes me uneasy. It's like, right, those books there, I can read those in 10 years and every word will be the same as it was before. Whereas if I go online and I type in, I want to see this book, the version I'm going to see has been corrected. Wokeified, if you like, and it's like, no, you've added corruption into my media that I wanted to consume. So that's the point in this video, which is coming to an end now. Support the Commander X16 and David Murray's work. This is just an example of, yes, $500 is a lot for a computer, that's true, but the amount of work that's gone into it, each one's going to be hand built. Probably you'll like sign it on the inside of the case or something cute like that. You know, that's what people do, and it adds collection value, that's what you don't understand. So this thing, if I keep it in the box, when I give this to my nephew, when he's older and he's, you know, leaving university and wants some money, and if I sell my collection of stuff, it's just going to be tons of cash. And the benefit is I don't pay any inheritance tax for it because it's not inherited and I'm not giving it away like that. And no one can take value out of it. You can't tax 5% of this. It's a physical object. It cannot be corrupted. I own this. Thank you, David Murray, for making this and me for buying it. So that's... Yeah, just think about that. You don't want to have no books and no CDs and no DVDs, even though you don't ever bloody use them, because they're a backup. That's pretty much it, they're a backup. So keep those, keep these, and if you've got $500 spare to spend on a luxury item which you absolutely don't need, because that's what this is. This is an enthusiast Commodore retro computer that's extremely pricey compared to other things of a similar power level, because you're not <laughs> it's not a fair comparison to say, oh yeah, uh, this computer versus the Commander 16. It's like the Commander 16 is a particular, specific custom device for this purpose. It's not general. It's not like a Commodore 64 in that way where it's built for this, that and the other. It's for a specific purpose. It's for fun. It's for developing games, music and graphics with that 8-bit charm. But instead of being limited with the low loading times and the uh, BIOS bugs and all that kind of stuff that the original Commodore 64 had and probably other Commodore computers, this one is literally a passion project of an extremely technically skilled, talented, creative man. And it's definitely going to be worth $500. I'm sorry, it just is. If you know anything about value accumulation, money, finances, economy, you've got any, you know, concept of how money works. You will know this kind of thing, this quality from an individual on YouTube who's got like millions of followers, you might think $500 for a computer that's 8-bit is a lot today, and it might be. I mean, $500 is a, a seriously decent chunk of cash, isn't it? So, But like I say, you're not buying this just for today. You're buying into a community of Commander X16 Commodore fans and the whole thing is led by this guy, David Murray, who, like, I can't sing his praises enough. Everyone go and watch his stuff on his channel now. 
if you're interested in that at all. So yeah, um, video is getting a bit long now, 15 minutes. I've got to put all this stuff away. But yeah, Commander X16, if you're a Commodore guy, go and have a look, you'll love it. I love it, I think it's great. Yeah, there's some problems with the sounds, like they, I can't pick a sound chip. It's gotta be compatible with the old Commodore, that's the problem. They can't just throw a new synth in there that isn't gonna be compatible with those old ones. It needs to be able to play old stuff as well. That's the whole point in it having the Commodore DNA. It's a continuation of the Commodore 64 community, which is great. It's like if you get into that community and you, you know you meet loads of people, you make friends, you'll be thrilled by the stuff in there and you will learn new stuff and enjoy your life a bit more. So ah, yeah, that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.